Hey y'all, it's Chris Klest here. I'm going to show you a game I created in PowerShell called Minesweeper. And this is based on Windows's Minesweeper that I used to play way back in the day. But I read that this game was made in like the 1960s um, on uh, Mainframe. So it's a pretty old game. So starting off, um, you have a a window here that uh, we can select a user, you can create a user, all that. But I'm going to go ahead and just uh, play a game under my name. Actually, I don't remember what settings I had saved there, so this might be a huge window. Oh, geez. <laughs> what a way to start. Um, I'm not going to play this one. Let me go back. Let me just play a smaller one here. So five rows. There we go. This is uh, better. If you haven't played Minesweeper, the objective is to click all of the tiles which are not mines, at least in this version. So starting off, it gives you one freebie which was clicked, and this big number here tells you how many mines are under adjacent tiles. So here, there's only five adjacent tiles. One of them is a mine. In this game, it's pretty decent odds. Um, unfortunately, there's no way to infer which one it is, so we just have to get lucky here. And there we go. I actually did get lucky. Um, so here's the same situation. Um, it's one mine is an adjacent, but there's only four now, so the odds are getting less. Same here. I'm just going to go ahead and click down here. All right, so this is zero, so there's no mines in adjacent tiles, including diagonal. So now here's a one. There's only one tile left where it could be. So I'm going to right-click and mark it as a bomb. And since this is the mine, right, and there's only one um, adjacent tile with a mine under it, which means the other ones are all clear. So that's really the best way to, to clear them, is if you can infer them. So here, there's only one diagonal one left, and we know this one's the bomb, so let's go ahead and click that one. Well, so we, there's four around this thing. There's only four tiles left. This one's one of them, so there's three out of four are mine. Those are bad odds to, to be clicking, but let's see what we can do. We know this is one. This is three, which means there's one left here. Um, so now there's only one out of two, and here we know that there's two adjacent m mines. This is the only one that's remaining, right? So it's two. Now there's four surrounding it. So that one's clear. And here's one out of two. One out of two. Now this is one of them. So this one's clear. Now look at that. All the ones surrounding that now mines this one's clear and this one's clear wow I can't believe I beat that round yeah, that's what you get when you beat the round you get some trumpets and you get that general guy actually I wasn't sure if he was a general or what rank he was I didn't look um, so you can restart so basically it shows you everything kind of grays out um, you can hit restart um, let me hit restart a few times I'm um, looking at this leaderboard here, and this basically shows the top three fastest games that were beat. And that's based on the number of rows and the number of bombs. We don't know exactly how many bombs are under here, though the game knows. Um, all we know is the difficulty, and the difficulty um, is going to be a percentage. I don't remember exactly what it is, but I think it's like... Um, Ten percent um, are mines for, for easy. For medium, twenty percent are mines, and for hard, it's like thirty or thirty-three percent, something like that. Um, but the exact number of mines, I don't, um, I don't provide that option yet. I don't know if I'm going to. Um, so there's a place you can look for all of those stats instead of having to click through each new game to find to 
find those stats, you can click on that button I had just showed. And it's going to give you a little table here um, with the player name, the amount of rows, the amount of actual bombs, and uh, the amount of seconds that it took to beat the game, um, and the date that it, which it was beat. And these are top scoring for that particular setting. So it was, in this particular game here, it was six rows, nine bombs, and I beat it in 51.6 seconds um, on this date here. Um, here down, we got 15 rows, 47 mines, almost 10 minutes. Uh, you could sort these if you wanted to. Um, there's some bugs here, but it's work in progress. Um, so let me go back to select user and see how I had the last time that I had played this. I had, or the last time I saved it. I had saved it with 15 rows. I'm going to go ahead and save it with five rows. This is the Save Settings button. And now, uh, anytime I exit the game and come back, and I click on um, my profile, and if I click Play New Game, it should default to five rows and difficulty hard. Um, If you click on random game, it should randomize. Yeah, see, now we got eight rows and it's on easy. So it randomizes the, those settings. You can mute the music, unmute it. Um, these grayed out boxes, I created placeholders for more functionality. I haven't added those yet. So you can't, there's no multiplayer. Don't get too excited by seeing that. You can't load a saved game, and you can't save a game yet. I don't have, I haven't created that. See, this one's also grayed out. Um, let me go back here. So you can remove a user with this button down here, and it gives you confirmation. Um, those stats will still remain under Chris, even though I just removed Chris. Um, but you can add Chris back, and when you play games and if you win some rounds, um, they'll still show up as Chris. So it's a little secret of the pros because multiple people named Chris can be playing this game and uh, share stats. Let's see, what else? The music, right now there's only three songs. Um, and they kind of shuffle, and they're just going to keep repeating over and over again. Um, this, the the module for this music, that the media player module, um, I didn't create this. This was uh, done by a person. I actually paid someone to, to finish that for me because I was getting... Eh, I was just overwhelmed, right? I had a full-time job and that was not related to this, and... Um, you know, a lot of time has passed since I started creating this game, and I just wanted to get it done. So I actually went to Upwork and uh, paid a person named uh, Josh Hendricks. At least just uh, show you the GitHub in case you're interested. Um, there he is. There's his contact info in case you want uh, some C sharp um, work done or PowerShell. You just both. Um, Here's where you can find my game on GitHub. Uh, so github.com, and there's my, I guess, GitHub names, Chris K847, and then Minesweeper is this game. There's some other stuff under my name, but right now, this is just about Minesweeper. Um, if you wanted this, you can click this button here and download zip, and then extract the files, and hopefully it should start working right away. If not, let me know. Um, there's plenty of bugs in this game to, to be worked on, so um, stuff that's uh, a work in progress. For, for instance, if I just click Create User, because it, it defaults to this Enter Your Name here. If I just click that, <laughs> it has a username to enter your name here. Um, also, um, it's always, if you remove all of these names here, there will always be a name here. It's never going to be blank. So watch, it's going to be player one. 
can't remove the last one. Um, I put my name in here. Let me remove player one. There's another bug here that's um, that's like this here. So now, see, it shows Chris, but if I add someone else now because I've removed player one, I think the game thinks there should always be a player one, and it just basically over overwrote my name. So, so that yep, there's things I got to work on. Um, and I believe the saved settings also um, will come back if you delete Chris and you add Chris back. I believe it'll um, go back to my save settings, though I'll need to confirm that. Um, so yeah, you can. Here, so here's the number of rows. You can select anywhere up to 15, down to three. Easy, medium, or hard. You can hit save settings. And uh, let me just go ahead and play a game here. Wow, two out of five, those are pretty bad odds. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Well, my odds weren't any better over there, were they? <laughs> what are the chances? Actually, I had the, the worst luck. All right, let me try it again. Oh, only one of these is a bomb. All right, finally, finally got lucky. It's gonna be this middle one here. Alright, um, what else? Um, to exit the game, you pretty much have to hit exit program. Watch. You hit the X, it just goes to, it's closing out the user form, which then prompts the script to go to the next form, so. Let's see. Yep, it just kind of goes back and forth here. So I'll need to add in some logic to actually quit the game when someone hits that close button. Let me just kind of quickly go through and make sure I didn't miss anything. So we've showed you the stats, we've done the random game, we've played just the new game, then we've added a user, removed a user, selected a user, showed the stats, exit the program, actually exits the program. We've done the mute. Um, there's a bug with the mute if you save it. So uh, I'm not going to save it with the mute right now. Switch user, play a new game. Yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.